Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Coaster Console Edition where the word of the day is corruption. Specifically, file corruption because once again we have unfortunately had footage corrupt on us. Uh, meaning that you guys have unfortunately missed the first hour or so of work on the fourth and final section of the theme park. But do not stress, just like a few episodes ago, I'm going to bring you guys all up to speed on everything you missed. And you didn't really miss that much because the first hour on this part of the park was very much just laying the groundwork, playing around with a bit of terrain and things like that. Whereas today, we're gonna to be using a brand new ride, which you can see me building on screen right now. We're gonna be using a bunch of brand new assets and just overall really embracing the Studios pack, which recently released for console. But before we start talking about those specific things, I guess it's time to actually have a chat about what we're making. Now, I did mention I wanted to do uh, something Far Cry related for the final part of the park, but I didn't have enough memory to build something that was inspired by a campaign. It just, I just wouldn't have had it, had the assets available to pull that off. So instead, my attention turned to my multiplayer maps, where I've got about 24 speed builds here on the channel, uh, which people have been watching for a couple of years now. So I put a community post out asking for suggestions on which map I should try and recreate, and this one checked all the boxes and thank you to everyone who did submit ideas but the reason why I chose this one which is inspired by uh what's it called uh urban trench warfare that's it it was my second map ever in Far Cry 5 so we're talking a few years ago now uh, but it checked the box for a number of reasons number one uh, it takes up a large amount of space uh, but because it's a battlefield and a war-torn area you can get a lot with sort of using ter you can get away with using terrain as the main feature uh, which you can see so far of course we're going to put plenty of effects down and stuff like that but it just meant that i could take up a large amount of area uh, without using too much of my budget secondly i wanted it to be different from all the other parts of the theme park so we've got a sort of uh alpine region as our first area then we've got mini monaco then we've got a tropical resort this is something just a little bit different to everything else so it ticked that box as well just made sure everything was a bit more unique and no part of the park looked like any other and then finally i did really want to use the new studio pack and the sort of war theme of this particular ride was just perfect for that because i could use a bunch of the effects and the new animatronics and all that sort of stuff and of course the new big screen tour ride which you can see me fiddling with here so that's very much the background i want to turn it into a bit of a movie set tour um, and i'm really excited on how it's already turning out i'm surprised how much progress can be made as well uh, in such a short amount of time so so far i've put down the track tour which is a bit glaring, I will admit. Uh, and you can see me here trying to do a little bit of terrain work to blend in some of the ramps. Uh, but I also played around with colors as well. And I only briefly experimented here on screen right now, but I'll continue to fiddle around with the track color to try and just blend it with the terrain a little bit more, um, just so we don't have too many issues with it, just looking too out of place. But again, I'm not going for full-blown realism here because it is at the end of the day meant to feel like a movie set. And as uh, as I put the assets down, I wanted it to uh, you know as the I want the main journey I wanted to take the guests on was they get on this big screen tour ride, and they go over the trench overlooking the town. Then they start going and weaving in between the battlefield where they're going to go past tanks, they're going to go past bomb craters with water splash effects, um, and ultimately the climax of the tour will actually be going behind the trench. Uh, that's right next to the town but also between the buildings and that meant that i would have the intensity of the trench on your left but also the buildings on your right where i'm going to put a whole bunch of explosions and things like that so that's going to be the main feature for the ride but you can see me right now just trying to bring the battlefield to life a little bit using the brand new fire effects and the tanks and all that sort of stuff uh the fire effects i'm going to have just sort of sitting there uh constantly just add a bit of atmosphere and I'm really curious to see how this map looks at night, actually. I haven't tested that yet. Uh, but I'm just putting those down as a bit of atmosphere uh, and to bring that sort of conflict feel to the whole place. Uh, but then we're going to have a few more set pieces as well, like tanks and specific explosions in the town, which you'll see me place today, uh, and water splashes, which you can see me playing with here, which you'll see me place today, and they're just going to be looping for now. But off screen, when the ride's close to completion, 
I'll actually set up some triggers so that they only trigger when a car is going past or a tour vehicle. Just so it's not too intense and it doesn't look too out of place. Um, uh, Cause right now it's very chaotic, especially with the footage sped up. Uh, but even at normal speed, things look a bit bonkers. So <laughs> I will be slowing that down and uh, making it feel more like a movie set because while I'm not trying to make a realistic park, I do want things to make some sort of sense. And let's be honest, somewhere like Universal isn't gonna have explosions going off if there's no one to see them happen. Those things cost money. So yeah, I wanted to reflect that in the park build as well and just only have effects go off when they were really needed. Uh, you can see me placing down some assets just around the place, trying to bring the place to life. I saw these spiked fences and I've kind of sunk those and put them on an angle uh, to create the effect of, uh, well, not barbed wire, but almost like a battlement uh, that's been put in the terrain. Again, just using what I can, repurposing what I can to uh, to bring the theme to life. I actually found a very distinct lack of assets that worked for sort of a, a more war-torn theme. Uh, I guess it makes sense. It doesn't really suit a theme park. Um, but with the studio's pack, I was surprised that there weren't a few more assets uh, like these or anything like that that we could use. So yeah, if you're someone who likes creating small little detailed assets um, and you enjoy uploading to the Frontier Workshop, that could be a little uh, a little task for you because one of the other things I also use on this map is the pirate cannons because they were animated, which is why I absolutely loved them and I wanted that, uh, that movement on screen. So I've used the pirate cannons, even though they don't really fit the time period. Uh, I could have made sort of my own artillery looking weapons, but they obviously wouldn't have been animated. So I just went for the simpler solution. Uh, but yeah, it certainly has shown me a uh, limitation in the uh, in the asset choice, which is something I never thought I would say about Planet Coaster uh, in my experience with the game so far. Now the buildings you can see in the background, they were probably the most interesting part of the hour that you guys missed. Uh, the I downloaded most of them from the Frontier Workshop in all honesty and I wish I could give credit to all the creators but pretty much every one of them has been made by a different person it would just become a long list. Um, but yeah there's some awesome sort of uh, Bavarian themed buildings on the Frontier Workshop that are incredibly well detailed. Um, so I just made a line of them just like with my, uh, my real trench map that this is based on which I'll link in the description. Uh, I placed them down, but then what I did, because it was a movie set, the other advantage that presented was that I could very realistically delete the entire back half of every single building and just sort of have the front facade. Now the main motivation for doing that was simply to avoid uh, unnecessary budget usage, and believe me, I've saved a good couple of percent by deleting the backs of those things, uh, but because it's a movie set, let's be honest, most of those are facades as well, so it really fit with the theme. Uh, they don't look, uh, sh let's say, structurally sound from the back uh, like a normal movie facade would, uh, but for the purposes of getting this done without any budget constraints, uh, it certainly did the job. Now, I made my trenches a touch, touch too deep. It's uh, it's interesting, obviously, when you're working from a bird's eye perspective, you, you can lose a little sense of scale. So I put the trenches too far down, but I didn't want to go over the terrain all over again. So I actually raised the cannons up here. Uh, and you can see these are the animated cannons I was telling you about. But one thing I'm going to have to go back and do uh, in a future episode, perhaps the next episode, is just revisit the trenches because these cannons are pretty much the only detailing I do. And I'm sure you'll agree that they they look a bit sore on the eyes. Of course, they're not going to look spectacular. Um, trenches aren't exactly meant to be an art installation. However, uh, I could make them look a lot more realistic and a bit more effort, like a bit more effort has gone into them. Uh, so yeah, I'm just adding the cannons here. Uh, again, these add a nice bit of mobility and the uh, mobility? Not, mobi not mobility, that's not the right word. They add a bit of... Uh, movement to every scene just to keep things a bit more interesting and I think once the tour gets down here by the town all those explosions going off and the cannons firing uh, will just bring the whole scene to life and it also makes sense because we've got a lot of explosions going off in the battlefield so they have to come from somewhere. Now one thing that certainly uh, stands out like a sore thumb is the choice of tanks. I'm undecided if I'm actually going to keep those because 
while they're pretty much the only tanks I have to work with, and again, I'm not that good at making stuff from scratch, uh, they don't exactly fit the theme, do they? <laughs> Which is more sort of World War II era. So yeah, they certainly stand out. I'm taking creative liberties just to get this thing uh, up and running. But yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see the, the assets we have and the assets we don't have. Uh, and the, the sort of ways you have to compromise and work around those. You could see there I took a brief tour behind the uh, behind the town there, just deleting a few more assets that were unnecessary. I explored uh, deleting some of the blocks and making it look like some of the buildings have been shot at and damaged and stuff like that, which I think I still might do in the future, but for now I just added a bit of fire effects and smoke on the ceilings or on the rooftops. Um, and this explosion effect here, so this is one of those scripted set pieces I was telling you guys about where as they come down here I'm actually going to have explosions and smoke shoot out of those two windows with the tank turret in the middle taking cover in the building or what's left of it um, and have some explosions shoot out as well which I think would be a really really cool effect. Uh, you can see me doing the same up there uh, with the smoke effect. I'm going to ultimately make it look like this was uh, shot at with a cannon. Uh, so yeah while things look a bit weird in isolation again because we've got the cannons in the opposing trench and stuff like that um, the explosions have a source and it's starting to come to life at this stage you know things are starting to look a bit more harmonious um, especially by the time I roughen up these these buildings that uh, represent the town with all the different fire effects and things like that you can see me just trying to use the big flame pads I rotate them in a way that makes them show as much fire as possible without the actual fire pads underneath uh, showing through the rooftops. So just trying to tweak a few things here and there to make sure things don't stand out too much. I will probably have to go back uh, off camera and just adjust some of the fire pads uh, in the battlefield because there are little bits and pieces here and there that stand out. But overall, most of it's pretty camouflaged and I don't think it's really going to be noticeable from the perspective of the ride. But we're really getting towards the tail end of this now. You can see me playing with some ember effects. Um, I think I go through and find some embers, uh, some larger ember effects that fit in the wider battlefield, uh, which are really cool because they add a nice atmosphere to the air. You know, you've got your explosions, but then you've also got that lighter space in between, uh, which, yeah, it's just having that contrast. So you don't want things to be crazy all the time. You want to have some quiet moments um, because if everything's just crazy all the time, the big moments lose their uh, the shock factor and the um, the entertainment value, if you will. You're just overwhelmed the whole time. So having a few slow moments with just sort of delicate embers in the air was uh, was something I was keen to add with this ride. And I think that's what I might have been placing back there. I might have already done it for all I know. Uh, but now that I'd placed down a whole bunch of the assets, I went back over. I started deleting some of the explosions off to the side. Uh, because I set up a bit of an asset palette for myself. Uh, just because I didn't want to spend so much time scrolling through all the menus just so you guys... Uh, well, I didn't want to scroll through all the menus and just waste time on the speed build with that. I wanted this episode to be as efficient as possible and you guys get to see the creative side of me uh, in action rather than the part that's just constantly looking for assets. But that brings us pretty much to the end of this episode. I've placed some trees down here, but we are well on the way on, on the fourth and final section of our theme park, and I hope you join me in the next one as we continue the race to the finish on this park. Hey everyone, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you love the creator side of gaming, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps out a small channel like mine. A link to our Discord is in the description and on screen right now you can see some other videos that I think you'll really enjoy.